I am Heidi Benjaminson, your host of Confidence Coaching, a podcast for mothers of teenagers who want to feel less worry and more calm. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 118, Staying Out of Other People's Lanes. I'm glad you're here, family and friends. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button to this podcast so you get the new episodes each Wednesday and share any episode on your social media that has helped you make a shift in your confidence, in your perspective, and how anchored you feel. Every little shift is important. Every new thought, new breakthrough, it matters. Okay, today's episode is going deeper on an incredibly impactful tool that I teach. In fact, I first introduced this in episode two of this podcast, Staying in Your Lane. Now, of course, the concept of minding our own business, it isn't new. I like to teach it in a way that we can all easily identify with. All of us drive or have driven on a highway. We know the reasons why it's important to stay in our lane, to obey the rules of our lane, to be aware of other lanes, and to only be responsible for our car and our lane. Okay, I will post a link to episode two in the show notes and post a link in other social media posts so you can listen to that one if you would like to. My clients and I reference this metaphor quite a bit because many of the problems we create for ourselves, much of the additional stress and pain we carry is because we are in other people's lanes. We're carrying loads that are not ours to carry and that not only creates unnecessary stress for us, it unintentionally projects that we don't have confidence that the other person can solve their own problems. Or it projects that we think it's bad if the other person fails or makes mistakes as they learn and grow in their lane. Now, I'm going to quickly give a recap of the three lanes in life and the responsibilities in each. Listen to episode two for more detail. Today, I want to focus on giving you tools to stay in your lane and how to move out of another person's lane when we accidentally find ourselves there, which happens. I'm moving in and out all the time with a goal to be in my lane as much as possible. We're human. We're women who have natural gifts to see the needs of others. These are beautiful gifts. These tools can help you identify when and how to get back to your lane. So the three lanes in life are first, our lane, second, other people's lanes, and third, God's lane. In our lane, we're responsible for our beliefs, for allowing and processing our emotions. What we feel is our responsibility. Our job is to learn how not to blame other people for what we feel. In our lane, we're responsible for all of our actions, for all of our reactions to others, to the world, to events. We are responsible for the words we say, what we type on social media, for how we treat others, for how we treat ourselves. We're responsible to take care of our needs, to set goals, to identify our desires, our gifts, and to build our own self-esteem and confidence. We're responsible to deal with the potholes and the problems in our lane. Just like driving on the road, potholes that we didn't create may appear. We do have to deal with situations that resulted from another person's agency or maybe a pandemic or forces we can't control. We aren't responsible to take on full blame for why these things are in our lane. We are responsible for being the hero in our lane. We get to choose how we react to, how we interpret obstacles, even our own inherent weaknesses. We get to choose if these become journey blocking roadblocks or are they simply opportunities to grow and become stronger. My road is different than anyone else's lane or road. My job is to make sure I manage my lower brain enough to stop comparison. Okay, the second lane is everyone else 
And they are responsible to manage the exact things that I just listed that are our responsibility. This is where people pleasing, for example, is a problem. We're trying to manage how someone else feels and we're projecting lack of confidence that someone else can feel negative emotions, which then feeds their false belief that feeling bad is something bad and something to avoid. This creates anxiety. Here's the thing. We want to be considerate drivers. We want to be considerate and thoughtful and kind humans. If I see a friend struggling or a child that's sad, I want to see this and I want to ask what's going on. I want them to know that they're seen. I want to make sure that the things I'm doing are maybe not inadvertently causing them harm. But we don't want to jump into their lane and start solving things. This causes confusion and means no one is in our lane minding the safety and emotional anchoring that we need. Remember, when we're in our lane, we don't see the perspective that someone else has. We don't know exactly what's going on for other people. If a child comes home upset from lacrosse practice, this may not be a problem. They may have every reason to be upset for obstacles that we can't see. Our job is to ask questions and not make assumptions, which is hard, y'all. Like, really, we have to learn to calm our brain from making assumptions. The way we would handle a problem isn't necessarily the right way for someone else to handle their life, their lane. We have to consciously remind ourselves that we don't know all the factors going into someone else's life decisions. In the last years, I've had several friends with teenagers deciding to have sex, the teenagers, Each of these friends and families have handled the situation in completely opposite ways. And it's not my job to judge which is right or wrong or to have any opinion about their life. I remind myself, I'm not in charge of anyone else's lane. My job in my lane is to love, to support, to withhold judgment, to show compassion, to be loyal and confidential. And that's it. If I choose anything else, I'd be carrying heavier loads than I need to carry. Neither asked me my opinion, and I would never get it. When people want our opinions, they'll ask it. Otherwise, our job is to see and support others. Now, this can be hard. I get it. I can want to jump to give advice or give my opinion. And with our teenagers, as they grow up, we're constantly trying to figure out where the lane lines are, what do we hand over to them, am I doing too much, too little. The key is to be trying again and again, to be conscious, not stress too much or tell ourselves that we made a mistake and we did it wrong, to just keep questioning, assessing, and loving them and ourselves. I'm going to give you lots of questions and ways to get back in your lane in the rest of this episode. Real quickly though, the third lane is God's lane. This lane has things that are out of control of us or others, or those that we're traveling the road with. The weather, wars, divine interruptions of our lives, and more. If we worry excessively and think we have control over these things, again, we create heavier emotions like insecurity in our lane. We infuse control freakishness in our lane, which hurts us and doesn't make us fun to be around on our journey. Recently, I went to the Canary Islands and a few months ago, a volcano erupted on another one of the Canary Islands, not ours and not even one that was right near ours. I saw the news and I didn't really think much about it. It didn't worry me because I don't let fear drive my car. Someone asked me about it and she was clearly very concerned and she may have reason to be concerned. I don't know. I just know I like how I feel when I release worry, which is a false sense of control over things that I'm not in charge of. I also have my own confidence that I can make the best last minute decisions if new information about volcanoes or such come into my lane. Otherwise, I spend zero energy worrying about volcanoes anywhere. Okay, I have several questions that you can ask yourself to help you get back in your lane, back in your business, and to anchor you to show up and be a more relaxed and confident woman and mother on this human journey. 
The first question to ask when we feel we might be in another lane or we find ourselves carrying a lot of emotional weight is, is this a problem? Am I worrying and stressing about something that is a problem? This is a very useful question when we're concerned and frustrated about maybe how our children or another person's feeling. Remember, emotions are not problems to fix. Our lower brain thinks anything negative is bad and shouldn't be there. This question of, is this a problem, gets our higher confident brain back on track. Let me give you an example. Actually, on this recent trip in the Canary Islands, my daughter wore her favorite white Nike sweatshirt. And on the day we checked out, she couldn't find it as we were leaving the hotel. We had been in another room for a few hours, so we actually couldn't go back to our room. We searched our bags. We looked all over. We asked the front desk, and they even took time to go to the laundry room since our room had been cleaned, and they couldn't find it. My daughter was really sad. It was her favorite sweatshirt. I knew it. She was sad and frustrated and disappointed. I was bummed for her. I've been in that place. Now, my lane is to feel empathy. And also, I didn't want to scold her at that moment. I let her feel it. She then started looking up how much it would be to replace the sweatshirt. And when we were at the airport, she told me how much it was to buy a new one on Amazon or somewhere. So again, the question for my brain is, is this a problem for my lane? I was sad. She was sad. I know how much she likes that sweatshirt, but being sad and disappointed are not problems. They're emotions that mean we're feeling humans. They're signs that my daughter has appropriate neurons and she has the capacity to feel lost. She wanted another sweatshirt. I also know she has 20 other sweatshirts at home. So replacing it isn't a survival need. So the second question to ask ourselves is, If I solve this problem, am I denying this person a growth opportunity? I told my daughter she could totally use some of her Christmas money to buy the sweatshirt if she wanted another one. I was sorry that she had lost it. I felt good for how I advocated in the hotel to look for it. I stayed in my lane with compassion and modeling how to assert for our needs and desires. Now, if I had quickly ordered her another one with my money, I would have denied her the opportunity to learn why she would need to maybe look when we pack over and over so we don't leave things in a hotel. I might have denied her the opportunity to decide how much she really wants another one. Does she actually want something else more? I might have denied her the pride of learning how to manage her money and take responsibility. So let's say she lost her only shoes or it was a different situation where she had no responsibility and maybe something cost way less. The lesson wouldn't be the same and I'd choose different. And this is only our decision to make. When we stop and ask these questions, we get our higher brain driving our car and we like how we show up. We project confidence that the other person can handle the sadness or disappointment. And we can offer empathy for times when we've lost things and it doesn't feel good. Now, of course, the ages and circumstances of other people in our lanes, that goes into the mental calculations of how to help. But these questions can help anger us and keep us in our lane. Okay, the third question to ask that gets us back into our lane is, is this my problem to solve? So similar to the last question, but this helps us Also stop and identify, whose problem is this? Am I inadvertently feeling responsible for all of the potholes on the road, thus making my life crazier than it needs to be? This question has really helped me move more responsibility to my older teens, since I want them building their muscles to solve problems and learn. In the middle of December, our oldest son came to my husband and myself, and he said he wanted to go to a different college in January than we had planned and prepared for. We actually had a clue he was kind of feeling this way, but we waited for him to come to us. We asked him to make his final decision. We helped him see that we could totally make it happen in a few weeks if he wanted, but he had to be 100% committed. So he came to us, he wanted to change, and we were totally supportive, which we would have been if he had stayed with the previous college. But this now meant 
that he had less than three weeks to figure out which school to go to, get his application in, get some interviews, find an apartment, sign up for classes. My head was spinning for a day because this is a big change. I canceled out previous travel arrangements to the first college, and I then caught my brain wanting to do all the research of which school had which deadlines and so on. The first morning after he told us, he came to us with information he had researched and learned. And I reminded myself, this is his problem to solve. If I jump in and do all the work, I deny him the learning and feeling like my daughter in the sweatshirt. I want him to build his muscles because this is his problem. I'll do my part, but I reminded myself over and over, stay in your lane, be supportive, give advice if he asks for it. I joined a few Facebook groups to help him find an apartment contract. In the end, it was his own texting and connections that actually made that happen. Now, last week, as we were grocery shopping with his roommate, I let them lead around the store. What food did they want? It's their problem to solve what they eat. That's not my problem. Even though we were at my alma mater and I wanted to walk the campus and show him things, I had to also let him solve certain problems, find a few buildings. He actually knew how to solve some of it way better than me. He's 100% capable in his lane. 100% capable of asking questions of people in their lanes. He's also 100% capable of enduring mistakes and going around his own potholes. If I let him be in charge, he seems more willing to ask me for help, for recipes for meals. When I'm not controlling, he's open to asking for help. In my lane, I want to be driving with hope in the front seat, not fear that something will go wrong. That fearful energy is obvious to others, and I do not want that energy blowing towards my children. So when we also ask, is this my problem to solve? We need to be okay that other people make mistakes. We don't want anxious perfectionism driving in our lane. I knew it was okay if a few things didn't go totally right for him. I wanted to be supportive in my lane and let him do the learning that he needs to do in his lane. Now, of course, as a parent, Stepping back isn't always what we choose. There may be times we feel it's our responsibility and we want to guide a child to their own safety. No one else needs to understand why we make certain choices. We have to like our reasoning and only we can know our intentions behind why we do certain things. I love how Anne Lamott says help is the sunny side of control. We don't want to be controlling. The fourth question to ask to get back into our lane, what potholes in my life am I avoiding by being consumed with someone else's problems? I'm telling y'all, this was very humbling and mind-blowing when I realized all the help we smear around the world is often our own avoidance. It seems noble to help others, but it could be a way to buffer and avoid the real work that's only ours to do. I can fall into this. I can want to create more content for my business and clients instead of having hard conversations at home or sitting in discomfort of doing something I don't want to do. It feels more comfortable to solve someone else's problems where our ego and self-esteem are not on the line, but those are not our jobs. There will always be more discomfort when we work on our potholes and our lower brain will have us running from this discomfort. This is where we have to get our higher confident brains online. This is where we come head to head with our own perfectionism and insecurities and upper limit beliefs. And this is the work that no one else can do. Sometimes the discomfort is us stopping, getting still, and allowing uncertainty, doubt, and faith in our bodies. Go, go, go can be us avoiding those feelings. Let me give you an example. Many years ago, like almost 20 years, I went to a dinner at my church for women of the church. It was a gathering of about 50 women, maybe more, and I saw that one of my close friends was in the kitchen doing the cooking, serving, plating, 
It was uncomfortable for me to go into the room of 50, not know where to sit, and then feel chained to talking to whomever was at the table. I wasn't totally conscious of what I was feeling or thinking then. I just know I instinctually asked my friend if I could help her in the kitchen, which I then proceeded to do for two hours. It was fun. This is where I'm more comfortable because I wasn't facing the potholes in my lane of building patience and connections with people not like me. I stayed busy avoiding sharing myself, vulnerabilities. Now, it seems noble at the time. Serving and being busy always looks like the best option. And maybe at times it is. Only we can look inside and say, what am I avoiding by doing this? My friend didn't ask for help, although I think she needed it. I took it upon myself to ask because I knew where I was more comfortable. Now, I'm more aware of what makes me uncomfortable. I'm able to face those emotions and I still today catch myself trying to avoid my potholes. Sometimes I do just drive around them, but awareness is the first step. Okay, fifth, this is the last question I'm going to give you. And honestly, it's the best question to get us back into our lane. This is where we ask ourselves, who do I want to be right now? We look into other people's lanes and subconsciously want to change them, or we think they're problems with who they are. We just don't have control to change them in their lanes. We have to force our heads back to focusing on our actions, on the emotions we're bringing to life. My child is failing half of their classes, struggles in certain subjects, and they don't seem motivated. Okay, who do I want to be in that situation? Do I want to be angry and frustrated? Or do I want to be patient and open-minded and curious? My spouse doesn't take out the trash when they said they will, or they get home an hour after they say they will, and dinner is cold. Okay, who do I want to be? Do I want to be resentful and the victim and mad? Or do I want to be curious again? Do I want to be compassionate and maybe courageous to have a hard conversation? My father-in-law comes over without asking, says rude things to me, and gives unsolicited and critical advice about my parenting. Okay, who do I want to be? Do I want to be critical and rude back? Or do I want to be loving and firm and again willing to have uncomfortable conversations? My boss is defensive and talks about other employees inappropriately behind their back. Okay, who do I want to be? Do I want to be defensive and justify my own cattiness? Or do I want to be assertive and firm and support my peers at work? Let other people do their messiness. We have to decide who we want to be with everyone. Our actions, how we feel, the emotions we bring to each relationship are our responsibility. We can't blame them on anyone else. The more consciously we ask ourselves, who do I want to be in this situation? We take back our power. We start managing and cleaning up the only place we have control. Now, before I end, please know, We're all going to be swerving drivers. Our lower insecure brains are designed to swerve and be in other people's business. Don't beat yourself up when you find yourself trying to manipulate your child or you really want to fix a pothole for a friend and you've offered some fixing advice. We're human. We get back in our lane and even patch up some potholes of our own with grace when we allow ourselves to make mistakes. The goal is to be in our lane and own what's going on there more than we're trying to control and micromanage other people's or God's business. The result is we end up liking who we are more. We're happier. We're lighter because we've dropped responsibility for things that were never our responsibility to begin with. We will cause a lot less accidents, usually emotional accidents, some of which take time to rebuild and repair. We will attract growth, kindness, goodness into our lives. Our children absolutely will see this example and they'll respond. They'll pick up responsibility for what is theirs because we reflect confidence in them to manage their business. Okay, that's it for this week. If you would like personalized weekly private one-on-one coaching to get back in your own emotional lane, sign up for a consult call at HeidiBenjaminson.com. A confident mother is the greatest gift to her family, 
not a perfect mother. Our families want us to feel confident, anchored, and calm. I can help you uncover this version of yourself. Have a great week.